We're here today in the Panhandle of Florida, where we've got another monolithic dome house being built. This one is really interesting. There's a couple things about it that are interesting. So number one, this is an Orion style dome. We call them Orions because of the stem wall. So here you're seeing wood forms, but these wood forms are just there for us to build a concrete wall. So there's a, a vertical concrete wall, and then there's a transition beam at the top, and then the air form is inflated on top of the wall. This does a couple things. Uh, one, it, it provides a really flat surface on the inside and the outside, right? So it's a little bit easier to install windows and doors and stuff. But then it's also just breaks it up. It looks really cool. A lot of people really prefer this look. So this dome is an Orion and uh, we're gonna go take a tour, and see what it looks like. So the other thing that's unique about this dome, we don't do it super often, but this dome is actually hooked to his existing house. So if, if you come up here, this concrete wall that you're seeing is one that we had formed. So we had the plywood forms here and we actually sprayed these concrete walls just like we sprayed the dome concrete, but we did it from the inside. So this connection to the house and you can see there's like a little air form on top. So we actually inflated this little square uh, air form on the top to give that roof a little curve, right? Because those curves are what makes things strong. So what you're seeing here is the single side forms that we use to spray the walls. Below it is the footing. He actually built this floor up quite a bit because as you can see, we're at a pretty serious incline here. So the footing was built up and then we were able to form our walls on top of that. Pretty simple forms, just OSB plywood with two by fours in the back. And then if you can look up, then you can actually see where we did a curved ring beam. We've done it two ways. We can do a curved beam on top of the square walls or we can actually do it to where they, they follow the, the straight sections of the dome. I prefer the round. I think the air form looks better when it's done that way, but there, you can do it both ways. I thought I would just inject a few quick images of some other projects we've done that are similar to this one. This one has the round base walls, and I really love the way that we do these air forms on these stem wall domes. And then this next one is a project that we built in Providence, Utah. We'll put the links to the articles here in the description. But it has the straight airform wall connections that we were talking about. So we'll put those links in the description. We'll get back to the tour. So the stage that they're at right now, they've got the walls built. They've inflated the airform. You can see that from the outside. On the inside, you'll see that they've got the first two inches of foam spray. This is our polyurethane foam machine here. And what you're seeing here is the two types of chemicals there are. There's a resin and an isocyanate that, that they use these two chemicals to make foam. And the proportioner pump is what you're seeing in the box here, along with all of the stuff that we need to spray foam. Up on this little hill, we've got our inflator fan, our SC3 inflator, and the airlock. Two guys fit pretty easy. I think the record is eight. That's pretty fun. Inside, you can see over here, the connection to the other house. So he's gonna cut a hole in the wall here when we're all done. But what you're seeing here on the left and right are the concrete walls we formed then on the top, that's that little bit of a dome roof. On the inside, you can get a feel for what these walls looked like when they were sprayed. So all of this was concrete, and then there's that transition up top. So, but we foam. So the exterior wall is basically just a facade. The structure of the dome, we'll, we'll go ahead and spray a brand new structural piece of dome here on the inside. So the dome is still monolithic, right? It's still one solid piece. It starts from the floor and it'll go all the way up the structure. So right now we've got two inches of foam. We've got about an inch of foam left to spray. We're gonna put a little extra foam up here in this area to just kind of fill it up a little bit before we start putting the rebar on and the concrete. And then we'll be into spraying concrete. One of the advantages of this system is that the bucks are really easy to install, easy to keep square and level. You can see over here, they've got a couple different bucks. You pan around.
Well, this air form, we have a couple different ways that we can pattern air forms. This one is called a transverse air form. It's, it's named such because of the way the seams traverse from side to side. Um, the typical air form that was built before this, we call those polar air forms, right? So all of the air forms revolved around a center axis. So there was always a point at the top where all of the seams would concentrate to. These air forms are beautiful. Like that's one of the things that the, especially architects for bigger buildings, they really like these air forms because of the lack of seams. I think this project only has like five seams in it, five or six. And other, the other way would probably have 24 to 30 seams in it that would all accumulate at the top. So this is a really beautiful way to build an air form. A technical method of preparing your phone for taking pictures inside the dome that's being foamed. Shrink wrap. So we're just gonna, foam will stick to those lenses and it will never come off. So we'll just try to pull the shrink wrap to where it's flat over the lenses there. And we can go make some video. We're back here this morning. The weather's a lot better than yesterday. And uh, we're gonna go inside. They finished foaming last night and they are going to be working on rebar this morning. So we're gonna go take a look, see what that's like. The next step is to really get the dome cleaned and ready for rebar, which means removing all the excess foam from the door bucks and getting all the plastic removed from the inside. Once the foam is all cleaned, then we can start hanging bar. The first bars to go up are the hoop steel or the horizontal steel. And the, the dome is reinflated now and it will support all of the weight of any kind of steel you have to put up in this dome. So we're going to paint all the hoop bars and then they'll start in on the vertical bars. I had to leave the site early, so Javier sent me a few pictures of the dome as he finished it. You can see the rebar finished and then after the forms are removed, you can see where the doors and windows will be. And on the inside, you can see a nice smooth concrete finish on the bottom eight foot that our guys did. And then the top has got the standard spray finish. 